reduction and oxidation podcast for you all. And it's called redox because that's the, what um, these types of reactions are called. They're called redox equations or redox reactions because you get something called reduction and something called oxidation happening at the same time. So it's similar to um, just another type of equation, type of reaction, it's similar to um, acids and bases. But this involves oxygen or oxidation. We'll move on. Let's have a look at what it all involves. Here's the first slide, and it's about um, the addition of oxygen. Basically, back in the ye olde world, ye olde days, we didn't know about um, the subatomic particles, like the electrons and protons, so we kind of class classified um, reactions due to what um, elements are involved in those reactions. And we saw that oxygen was involved in a lot of different reactions, and we called these reactions oxidation and reduction reactions, where oxidation... Here is the burning or the addition of oxygen and reduction is the subtraction of oxygen or the loss of oxygen here. So burning magnesium, as you can see here, involves the addition of oxygen to make an ionic compound called magnesium oxide. Now, um, as I said, back in the olden days, we didn't know about other things. What we now know is that this formation of this ionic compound is actually involves the exchange of electrons. And you'll remember from year um, 10 and this um, first part of year 11 where we looked at electron transfer diagrams where if you look at these two compounds here, you've got magnesium, what's happening is it's losing two electrons and it's giving it to the oxygen and forming the ionic compound. And in this ionic compound, really, what you've got is a magnesium 2 plus ion and an oxygen 2 negative ion, like kind of bound in together by electrostatic forces between those two charges. So... The oxidation reaction actually involves the loss of electrons. And we can show this if we just split this reaction here up into two parts. We'll have this one, which happened to the magnesium, where it's losing its two electrons to become magnesium 2+. plus. This is known as an oxidation reaction. At the same time that this magnesium is being oxidized, this oxygen is gaining those two electrons. And we can represent that by this. And the oxygen, each oxygen is gaining two electrons to become two negative. And because we've got two oxygens in this equation, we have four electrons that need to be added to these two oxygens. So we have this being an oxidation reaction or oxidation half equation. And this being the reduction half equation where the magnesium is being oxidized and the oxygen is being reduced. And we can show this by splitting equations up into half equations, where we have the first part, um, the magnesium forming magnesium 2 plus, and the oxygen forming oxygen 2 minus. And that's oxidation and reduction in terms of half equations. Um, next slide involves our song that we learned, and I'll quickly give you a, a nice rendition of it now. So I've gone too far. Um, go back. And it goes along the lines of, believe it or not, ah, oh, I've lost an electron. That's oxidation, so electrons are on the right. Somehow they say that makes me the reductant. My oxidation number is climbing up out of sight. And this, this song here, it goes about um, exactly what happens in oxidation and half equation in particular. We've got key words on this side. We've got oxidation, reductant, oxidant, and reduction and half equation, and we need to use these words properly. Oxidation is the thing that involves the loss of electrons, so electrons appear on the right-hand side of the equation. The thing that becomes oxidized is called the reductant, okay? And this um, is one thing that you're gonna, it's kind of hard thing to remember because it sounds like the opposite, but the thing that's being oxidized or where oxidation occurs, that is known as the reductant. Oxidant and reduction, obviously where a reduction occurs, we have the oxidant and we can represent equations using a half equation to show the oxidation half and the reduction half. This is going to kind of come into play a bit later on in the next part of our my slide, but just to introduce you to those um, different types of equation, sorry, different types of words. We also have um, this part here, which will help you. It's known as oil rig where we have oxidation is loss and reduction is gain of electrons. So um, we have that happening as well. So to remember how 
we have oxidation or reduction. We have our song, which I'm going to get you guys to sing every single lesson we have while we're doing on this. And we also have our um, oil rig thing there. The last part here, my oxidation number is climbing up out of sight. It goes upon these few different rules. Assigning oxidation numbers, we need these rules. There's a couple of exceptions to this rule, but I'm not going to introduce them to you now. I'll introduce them to you a bit later on. But these are our general rules for assigning oxidation numbers. Elements have an oxidation number of zero. Oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two. Hydrogen, always positive one. The ions have the charge they have. And compounds, we add to the charge that is on those compounds. And the next slide is a few different examples of how that all works. We have oxidation numbers here, our rules, and we have a few things we're going to assign oxidation numbers to. The first one is magnesium. Now, magnesium is simply an element by itself, so its oxidation number is going to be zero. So the oxidation number of magnesium here, zero. Oxygen, okay, even though this oxygen here is oxygen, it's not negative two because it's elemental oxygen. Elements by themselves always have a zero. So this oxygen here is going to have an oxidation number of zero because it's an element. When we get down to here, we have our sulfur dioxide. To grid our um, oxidation numbers, we need to follow these rules here and work out what's going on. In this, we have an oxygen and a sulfur in a compound. So because this oxygen is in a compound, it has an oxidation number of negative two. There are two oxygens, which makes overall this to be negative four. The whole compound has no charge, so it has to add up to zero. So that means this sulfur here must be positive four. So because oxygen is negative two, we've got two of them, makes this part here negative four. To balance that out, we need the sulfur to be positive four there. And we get that there, happening there. And next one, nitrogen oxide. We have our O here, okay, it's a compound, so it has to have a negative two char or oxidation number. That means our nitrogen has an oxidation number of positive two. So because it's, again, this oxygen's in a compound, it's negative two, this nitrogen has to be positive two to balance it out because it has no charge overall. Moving on, sodium chloride. Now, we haven't got any um, things here, no oxygen, no hydrogen, so we don't know how what it is. The ions have their charge, and we should know that the sodium ion is always positive one, and the chlorine ion is always negative one. So these two things, when they're an ionic compound, they just have their charge. So sodium's positive one, chlorine's negative one. Sodium's positive one because it's in the first column of the periodic table as well, and this is in the seventh column, so it's always going to be negative one. So the things that are in the first column, always positive one, and the things that are in the last column, always negative one. Now we have chromium um, dichromate, sorry, this ion here, the dichromate ion. Oxygen, as you know, we said is negative two, always negative two. So overall, with seven oxygens, we will have negative 14 for our oxygen side of things. To add up to negative two with negative 14, we have to have positive 12 for our overall chromium. So that means each chromium must be positive six, okay? Because oxygen is negative 2, makes a total of negative 14. To get to 2, we need 12. So therefore, this one must be positive 6. Okay? It's easy if you write down little numbers underneath here. So if you write down negative 2 for oxygen, then negative 14 underneath it with the 7 oxygens. Going across, you'll have to have positive 12 for chromium. And then obviously positive 6 for each individual chromium. Sulfate. Um, Again, we follow the same rules where oxygen is negative two, so overall this has to be negative eight. Okay, to get to two, we must have positive six for our sulfur. Now I've written this wrongly here. This sulfur here should be positive six. Okay, I've done it incorrectly. What I've done is disulfur um, tetraoxide, but it is incorrect. This should be positive six. Hopefully that gives you an idea about oxidation numbers. There's a couple of questions that you can deal with with oxidation numbers. And I think um, coming up, we'll do it on that. That's oxidation numbers for you. And if we go back to our song, we remember that 
if we assign oxidation numbers in an equation, we can work out what thing is being oxidized and what thing is being reduced. So we'll move on um, to the next part. Here's a keyword example, how we're going to use our keywords. And this is an example of a question which might ask you to put down um, an equation, tell me which is the oxidant, which is the reductant, and so on and so forth. Let's have a quick look at this. When iron is placed in a solution of copper sulfate, the solid ion, solid copper, can be seen forming on the surface of the ion, and the solution loses sorry, its um, distinct blue colour. Write two half equations and a full overall equation for this reaction. So here's our overall reaction. It's copper sulfate with iron. Then we form this um, copper solid, because we can see the solid copper being formed, and that means that um, iron must be attaching to the sulfate. We'll take out the sulfate because it's a spectator ion, and we're left with this equation here happening. We have copper 2 plus plus the solid iron, and it's forming the iron 2 plus and the um, copper. This is known as a full equation here, because we have the two things together, the reduction and the oxygen. Um, the oxidation happening. We can split this up into half equations. We'll do the copper one first, I think, and we take the copper two plus, forming solid copper. Okay, this will be our half equation for our copper two plus, and we have our half equation for our iron. Whereas we know these electrons are on this side because what's happening: the two plus is adding two electrons to become solid, and the ion iron here is losing the two electrons to become a a charged um, ion. Which one of these is oxidation and which one's reduction? Well we can do that by singing our song and we go believe it or not I've lost an electron that's oxidation so electrons are on the right. So that means this iron equation is being oxidized so this is an oxidation equation. We use our keyword to say which one is the reductant and we realize that somehow they say that it makes me the reductant so therefore this thing that's being oxidized in the oxidation equation is the reductant. So Fe solid is our reductant. Okay, that's, sorry, go back. That is this, <coughs> excuse me, use of the keywords. So we have half equations, a full equation, okay. We have oxidation happening here, and we have reduction happening here, and our oxidant is our copper 2 plus, and our reductant is our iron solid there. Moving on, more keyword examples. We have this one. Sodium metal is exposed to air. It loses its metallic shine and forms sodium oxide. Identify which species is a reductant or the oxidant and which reaction is oxidation and reduction. First of all, we have um, sodium metal forming sodium oxide. So it's going from sodium metal to a sodium ion. So we go from sodium to sodium plus, plus one electron as being, it's losing that electron. Oxygen in the air is forming the oxide here, so therefore we have the oxygen two gas forming oxygen two negative ion here. Um, we look at what's happening here. We got the electrons are on the right hand side, so according to our song, believe it or not, I've lost an electron, that's oxidation, so electrons are on the right. This is oxidation. Somehow they say that makes me the reductant, so that means this is being the reductant. Okay. And then we have our oxidant over here is being reduced. So our reduction is happening, and our oxidant here is our O2. So this is how we use our keywords. We look at for the half equations in oxidation, and the thing that is our reactant on our oxidation is our reductant. So whatever's happening here is our reductant, and it's being oxidized. To make a full equation what we need to do is um, add the two equations together and we need to first of all balance up our electrons on either side. Because we have four electrons here and we only have one electron there we need to multiply this top one by four. So we get four sodium solids plus two oxygen gases plus four electrons negative going to whatever is on this side, which is four sodium ions plus four electrons plus two of these here. 
So in effect, we've added these two together and multiplied this by four. So we have four electrons on either side. Because we had error on both sides here, we can cancel them out. And therefore, we get our overall reaction here being our sodium and oxygen forming a sodium ion and oxygen ions. And therefore, we have half equations going to a full equation. So that's how we create full chemical equations from half equations. Key questions from the book are here. So um, I'll let you go and um, do those questions there. And then we'll go back together and we'll look at our um, more complicated redox equations. So we've gone really simple ones where we're just looking at exchange of electrons. We're going to move on and look at how we balance harder or more difficult redox equations.